Dude, how about Alex Barkov? Sasha Barkov. What? Sasha, they call him Sasha. They're both technically right. I think after a game like that, we should just call him Sir. Hi! Victory for me! I have no idea what I'm doing. God! You know what, guys? Screw it. I, I think you deserve it, alright? It's not your fault. It's not your fault. You deserve treats. You always deserve treats, and we deserve a cup. We deserve Alex Petrangelo and Colton Pareko for a fourth rounder. We'll get Barkov for a tour at Drake's house. I wish the Leafs puck luck was as loyal as you. Charlie, come back! You happy now, guys? I fixed the lighting. Sorry for trying a thing, but if I change the lighting from last video, why do I still feel so blue? Leafs lose 4-3 in overtime to the Florida Panthers on Hockey Night in Canada. That was kind of neat. Not a lot of those. Panthers fans, if I were you, I'd be pretty stoked about shutting up all the Leaf fans in the building. But also, I would just have Alex Barkov on top of the tree. Because you know, in the not-too-distant future, as in maybe starting this season, Barkov is going to be the new Selkie winner every year guy, right? What about this guy? What about that guy? What about that? Yeah, they'll all be in the conversation. It's going to be Barkov. Drawn like 20-something penalties, hasn't taken one yet? Is that Did I read that right? Easily his team's MVP. Gonna win the Lady Bing. Gonna win the Selkie. Maybe should be in the heart tree trophy conversation. The term Eastern biased isn't right because it doesn't include the Panthers in the conversation. And the only icing on this cake was that Barkov got some national TV time in Canada. This guy deserves to be in every one of those conversations. He's disgusting. But apart from that, I think I'd be super worried about Troy Brower getting suspended. Like, man, how are you going to replace him? That's how I would feel if I were you. Was that salt I detected, Steve? Yes, it was! The officials were garbage in this game! For both teams! Jaime got two minutes for getting shoved into the goalie. At worst, you could give him two minutes for allowing himself to be shoved into the goalie. The fact of the matter is, he was shoved into the goalie! Don't shove a guy into your goalie, brainwave! The Brower hit! The hit on Kapanen was almost a full second late and got him right on the knee. Probably not gonna get suspended or anything because the Leafs aren't owned by Jeremy Jacobs. Did he just deny Stunner? And the Mackenzie Weger cavalcade of comedy. Dude, Ennis boarded him. That was kind of rough. And then he was mad and going around the ice and took a few dumb penalties, but I don't blame him for seeing the red mist. And on one hand, he did hit the ref with his stick while having a temper tantrum. On the other hand, it woke him up! Like, please tell me this is wrong. This was the Hyman incident in the first from bottom to top. Hyman roughing against Keith Yandel, served by Andreas Janssen. Hyman interference against goaltender Roberto Luongo. Keith Yandel roughing against Frederick Anderson? Are you alright? My wife's a kindergarten teacher and they get all restless before the holidays. Is that what's happening here? Also, they both had their gloves off and punches were thrown. That's a fight. It would have been a fight if you didn't get in the way. And because it was a fight, you just decided not to call it that. Instigator! What do you think they fought because Hyman told him his skates were untied? Or did you not give him the instigator because you thought Hyman deserved to be attacked because he interfered with the goalie, which is what you thought in your goofy, very wrong mind? Awful! Minor league garbage! The Leafs did not deserve to win this game. They basically didn't play the first half. But for the love of Brian McCabe, can someone set an alarm clock for these refs? Puck drops at 7.07. Wake up! Give me your coffee. What's in your coffee? I know what was in mine this morning. Salt. And bitter. The coffee was not good. At the end of the first period, the Panthers were on the power play to Donov, to Barkov, and the Leafs PK looks off. I saw a few people say, oh, Anderson's been crap lately. What, did you want him to turn into a brick wall? That was in a video game, darling. It wasn't real. Where'd you get your coffee from the same place as the ref? Second period, after nearly having to leave the game because Troy Brower, who's still in the NHL, by the way, need him, Kasperi Kapanen takes a penalty, Panthers power play. Jonathan, you be doo doo Oh, he's celebrating. Yeah, he's celebrating. Go ahead and celebrate. Coffee was awful this morning. Leafs down to nothing, but it's okay. They got a four-minute power play coming because Weger just lost it. Nothing. No finish, no goals for you. Remember that. Save that. We're going to talk about that later. I'm yelling now, but there's going to be a point. Third period. Riley gives the puck to Gardner. Mm. What were they doing on the ice at the same time? Mm. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I actually noticed that. That is the pairing that Babcock uses when the team needs to... You know, get a goal. You know, when the team needs to um, be good. Gardner puts a shot on and John Tavares tips it. That's a goal. He's a leaf. And that pairing worked. Oh, would you look? Keep that in mind as well. Hey, Mitch, shoot it more. And he darts through the slot with reckless abandon, caring not for the feelings of the Panthers. Respect your elders. Never heard of it. Snipes on Roberto Luongo, his seventh of the season. The Leafs tie it up. Oh, this overtime is going to be great. Barkov's left alone in front and he scores.
Listen, I've never been an X's and O's guy. So like systems and strategies and stuff like that. I mean, there's a reason Mike Babcock is where he is and I am where I am. However, the Leafs, particularly in their own end, seem to lack two fundamental skills. One of them, stop me if you've heard this before, is talking. Talk with your mouth. And the other is counting, literally counting. A little over three minutes left, puck goes into the leave zone. Dermot's in a puck battle along the boards with a panther. Couple seconds later, there's Ozhiganov in there. He's on Troy Brower. And Kapanen comes strolling into the screen with nobody anywhere near him. Now, hey, if you're safe and you can go in there and create a number problem for the Panthers, steal the puck, maybe send it the other way and score that game-winning goal, great. The problem is, how are you gonna know that it's safe to do so if you don't look? Take a little peek! Barkov might be out there. You might have noticed he hasn't left the ice for the last 15 minutes. Janssen's in there too. No one knew he was there. The most dangerous player they have. That is how you lose hockey games. That is championship repellent. Well, Steve, how would you know? Um, excuse me, sir. If there's one thing I know, it's the Leafs losing patterns. And they are severely on the verge of doing so. Until about a minute and a half to go. Leafs net empty. Jake. Gardiner. Over to Morgan Riley. There's that thing. To Mitch Marner and John Tavares deserve some credit on this play because Luongo left a lot of net open and I don't think he could see where Mitch was. Oh! Off the post and in! The coffee sucks but the Mountain Dew is good! Mom's going nuts! Mitch hugs the allegedly road crowd! Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to overtime. In overtime though, Mitch exits the zone but he's stopped by Selkie Barkov. Riley stops, he's back, but then Marner commits a cardinal sin in overtime. He's standing flat-footed, and he's standing on the non-defensive side of the puck. That starts the two-on-one for the Panthers. Huberto to Barkov, it's done. Now that was awful by Riley. He didn't He didn't take anybody. Grapes gave him grief for taking the shooter. He didn't take anybody. But Mitch got picked off, and that's going to happen. But the fact that he stopped skating, that is death in three-on-three. Three. That was the beginning of the end. And a first! Barkov's first NHL hat trick! All trends are coming back! Leafs always a lot but at least they get a point. They salvage a point, even though they barely played any of the game except for the third. Was it really that bad? Ah, uh, yes, this is where we come back to a couple themes that I brought up throughout the video. Mike Babcock turns to Riley and Gardner when the Leafs need to be particularly good. Now, Mike's a smart guy. You ever thought about making that pairing a thing? Like all the time? And here's the thing, I think he has considered that. And while Riley can play the right side of the ice while that is a pairing, here's a problem, usually the right side of the ice for the Leafs is ass. So I think the Leafs are working on acquiring a righty defenseman. Or dude, I don't care, even a lefty who can play the right side. And then in my ideal little dream world, you'd have Riley Gardner maybe, and then whoever the new addition is, and Dermot. And then you can give Ron Hainsey minutes that are more conducive to someone who is his age, and Zaitsev just less in general. Look, Babcock's got two options. Make that a thing and play those guys too much. Or make it a thing and not play them enough, leaving the rest of the decor vulnerable. Or continue to do what he's doing, spread them out. I think using them situationally is about right. Now, we're gonna have a talk. I'm still gonna answer your questions, but I think what I'm about to say is gonna answer a bunch of them. No, the sky is not falling. Here's the deal. Why are the Leafs playing like crap lately? Why does their power play suck? What's wrong with Freddy? Why isn't Matthews scoring at a goal a game pace? Is it something to do with Cronwall or the previous injury? A lot of that can be answered by a fairly simple number. You ever heard of PDO? I know a lot of you have heard about it, but for those of you who haven't, PDO is save percentage plus shooting percentage. And it helps measure luck. Look, some goalies are just better than others and some shooters are just better than others. Some teams are gonna have a bad PDO because they're bad and some teams are gonna have a good PDO because they're good. But for the most part it should sort of level out. And an average team or I guess an average team with average luck should be around 100. So let's say the team stops around 91% of the shots they face. I'd say that's about league average and they score on about 9% of the shots they face. Basically all season nah, the Leafs has been up here and Freddie was stopping absolutely everything and the Leafs were automatic on the power play and then when they were at even strength they were automatic there too and it's funny because Willie was on the verge of coming back and I'm like they still haven't had their PDO crash yet because it does level off and he comes back and sure enough written in stone you could have called it and what PDO does is I think it just makes people lazy oh the Leafs are bad because Nylander messed up the chemistry what that's like your car not starting and you blame it on the toaster why would you blame it on the toaster well because I bought the toaster last week and my car's been giving me trouble for a week yeah I don't know 
Oh, well, and I tried to start the toaster and I got zapped by it. Did you put your keys in the toaster? So look, I know you've been watching this team and I've been watching this team, but I think a lot of the bad things that the Leafs are doing that you're seeing right now have been there all along. But the main difference is the law of luck is turning against them. A lot of teams start real high and they collapse a little bit and a lot of teams start real low and they go, whoa. And the good team didn't all of a sudden get bad and the bad team didn't all of a sudden get good. It's just leveling off balance. The Leafs power play wasn't good against the Florida Panthers and you go, wow. It's been a few games since they were any good. Here's the truth. The power play was 0 for 6 against Tampa, and it was also excellent. Dude, they got 15 shots. They were robbed. The Leafs outshot and outchanced and had more time on special teams against Tampa and lost. Probably one of their better games played of the season. But for all the games in the first two months of the season where the Leafs were outshot by their opponent and still came up with a victory, here's a little karma. You've been watching hockey for a while, right? 82 games a season and you've been watching for years. You've probably seen thousands of games. This happens in some way, shape, or form every year! In the same way that it wasn't right to, like, plan the parade route three weeks ago, it's not right to say that the sky is friggin' falling. They need to improve their D. They're not gonna win in the playoffs without it. Well, duh. That was the case when they were winning, too. There was a reason we were calling for Freddie Anderson to be in the Vesna conversation. His numbers said he should be. And his numbers have dipped a little bit, but they're still very good. Look, good play or bad play, good luck or bad luck, are you in? There's just under 50 games remaining. Are you going to be tortured by this all season? Are you in or are you out? Someone tweeted me, I am out. Better not show up at the parade if they win. Or I guess you can show up, but you better be standing at the back. You're not taking my spot. I've been here the whole time. This team is ruining my life, but I love them. Do you hear my voice? That's the sound of love. Also, uh Advanced reading copy, it's not out yet. Questions. Is William Kapanen a player on the Leafs? Honestly, I'm starting to think so. I'm getting sick of it. There was a full shift last night where I was like, oh, Nylander's on with Matthew. No, he's not. What time did the Leafs game start last night? Well, it depends. If you ask the Leafs, they'll probably say around 9 o'clock. If you ask the refs, they'll say, what Leafs game? Can you floss better than Bonnie Marner? No, I cannot. I'm too, like, staccato with it. She was like, she's smooth, man. I get where Mitch gets it from. Okay, this is a really important question. I love this. Do you do you think the Leafs stick to Hyman Matthews Nylander in the next game? If so, what do the rest of the lineup look like? All right. So here's the great thing about the Leafs offense is on paper, it might be the best in the league. It's top five. I shouldn't just say offense. Defense can help generate offense and the Leafs defense is rare. So uh, let's go with their group of forwards. And they have crazy depth and they also have crazy top end talent. So hear me out. There's two guys who got to get going. Well, Matthews needs to get back on his world destroyer pace and Willie just needs to start a season basically. Hyman, Matthews, Nylander. We know it's a good line. It's worked. There's a ton of familiarity. Why not? Put Tavares with Andreas Janssen and Kasperi Kapanen. I love those two little energizer bunnies. And while splitting up the duo of Tavares and Marner sounds ridiculous, that little line looked nice. Your third line is Kadri in the middle with Marlo and Marner. Reunite Marcad Mar 2018! Once again, we know it works. And all of a sudden, the Leafs can throw out three lines that are probably first lines on a bunch of teams. And marlo has been all right. Gotta get Kadri going. He's another guy I've seen a lot of complaints about. I don't think he's really been playing poorly. The puck just won't go in the net. The king of the post. And then your fourth line is Ennis Lindholm Brown. You play the top three lines 18 minutes each-ish, and that leaves six minutes for the fourth line. Which isn't really six minutes because Ennis has been playing on the second power play, Lindholm can kill penalties, and Brown can kill penalties. Or you can go with Ian Tullock's suggestion from before the season even began. Because you know you're using your fourth line so little, have two guys like Brown and Lindholm in the lineup. They can kill penalties. They can do whatever you ask them to do. And because we know the defense isn't very good, have seven. The Leafs have forward depth. Why would they take one out of the lineup? The Leafs' forward depth allows them to go 11-7. That's how that works. That doesn't make any sense. They have three first lines. Yes, it does. I think it's worth a shot. Nylander's Matthews Kapanen. And when is that going to happen? That is another super fun suggestion. Look, here's what I would say to that. They clearly need to make a change on the back end, in my opinion. Not even in my opinion. No, they need need to make a change. But if Kyle Dubas has proven anything, it's that he's willing to be patient. And dude, look, there's been a lot of little transactions recently because his time is freed up after the Nylander thing. And they're not big. 
traded Cracknell for Steve Alexi. Uh, Jeff Glass was sent to the San Diego Gulls. That's Lawrence Gilman, though. Uh, Josh Levo trade. There was that little guy. Callie Rosen resigned. Ian Scott signed to a contract. He's fidgeting. He's got time to do all kinds of things. And look, they're talking about Petrangelo going to the Leafs on Hockey Night in Canada. I, I think he's working the phones. And it might happen in a couple months. It might happen in a week. It might happen while I am editing this video. I just need to know. I just need to know. Are you in? So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe, please, if you really like to tell all your friends. And this is the advanced copy of my book. Oh my goodness, you can pre-order it down below. It comes out March 19. When the lease will have Alex Petrangelo and Colton Pareko and Wayne Simmons and a cup ring because they'll just cancel the playoffs.